sometimes messages are so important and I'm so deeply moved by them that I want to share every single uh, experience I've had, every single piece of information that's come to me. And it's difficult to wrap them all up into one. I think I want to talk about 2012 and then bring everything into focus from there. There's been a lot of talk about 2012, different aspects of where we're going, what we're doing, talking about um, the different perspectives as far as what's going to happen in 2012. Is Are we all going to die? Are we all going to live in a utopia? Are we going to have three days of darkness? Are we going to have turn into our light bodies? Are we going to become more enlightened? Is our DNA going to change? All of these things and more are questions that are floating out in the public. And it's not just within this community of enlightened people that these are questions. These are things that are being brought up into the mainstream in the movie 2012 and the um, ideas and concepts like the new television program that's out right now called The Event, which obviously is talking about extraterrestrial contacts as well. So these things are very much in our mainstream also, and when people talk about disclosure with the extraterrestrial contacts and about where it is that we're going towards 2012, I think that we're all very curious as far as where our, um, where we're going to end up and what we're going to experience in the meantime. I have some very strong opinions and perspectives about 2012. And the very first one that I'd like to share is that we're not all going to die in 2012. There's not great disaster that's going to take place. That we, um, we as a collective have the ability to make the right choices, the right decisions about where it is that we're going into the future. Now, when I was on board this craft in 1988, speaking with these, these extraterrestrials, star beings. Um, they go by many, many names throughout many different cultures, religions, and beliefs around the world. It's up to you to decide who you want to call them, whether they're Nordics, Pleiadians, um, Ashtar Command. All of these things, in my per in, from my perspective, are simply uh, different names for the same or similar beings. The ones that are coming here giving us guidance and enlightenment as to how to move through this very special time and in, into 2012 and beyond. The understanding that I have is that humanity as a whole has the ability to create change through our thoughts and that the prayers and meditations that we're doing today, the thoughts that we carry in our hearts and in our minds on a daily basis, have the strength, the power, and the ability to lead us and guide us to where we need to be, what we need to be doing, how we need to proceed, and where we're going to be in the future. And I'll give you an example of this. And, and this is really something that I, I very much keep close to um, my heart as I walk through this very difficult time that we're in, in change. When I was on board this craft in 88, there was a big screen that was up in front of me. And I was shown a very destructive, um, I believe, earthquake that may have taken place. And I'm not sure if it was an earthquake, if it was a meteor strike, but there was great devastation all around in this image that I was shown. And I, I hold this so close to myself, and I'm going to ask all of you to do the same thing. To remember that with the power of our thoughts, with the power of our intentions, and with the loving heart 
and, and keeping it focused on that, that we could send this energy ahead of us and that by doing so in a positive way, by thinking that we were going to be living in the utopian world, thinking about what it is that we want rather than focusing in on, on uh, possible destruction that might come to our earth, which many people are trying to make us focus on. It doesn't need to be that way. We're very powerful beings and our thoughts have the ability to change, to move our path into the future. Let's take, for example, if there were a meteor coming towards Earth. These beings very, very clearly said that if enough of us um, focused our minds and our hearts towards the one thought that we would just simply push that away from Earth, that we could, in fact, do that. And that is the power that we have as human beings. So. When people talk about perspectives of what's coming in 2012 and beyond, it's my understanding that in every day and in every moment we are choosing where we're going to go and what path we are going to follow. And so 2012 is really up to us. And where I am right now in the Southwest with the Hopi people, um, it ties into the 2012 because of the indigenous connection with everyone. Now, <clears throat> there are certain groups of people that are on the earth and every one of these groups is, an, is important to where we're going to be going. For example, the, um, the community that's based in um, very much spiritualism that's, that's focusing on meditations, group meditations, world meditations. That's, there's another group that's focused on seminars and education in, in that manner. There's other groups that are focused on the indigenous cultures and, um, and focusing on the knowledge that they carry into our future. There's religious groups that are also focused on things that are written in their particular um, religious beliefs, um, the, the, the Bible being one of them. All of these different groups are not actually focused on different things. We are all focused on the same thing, and that is from our hearts, we are getting these little gifts of where it is that we're going into the future, and it's up to us to focus the thought um, and to focus our attention to what it is that's important in our world. We can't become complacent about where we're headed. We have to work hard within ourselves to be able to go deep within and look at what is inside of us, what we believe individually to be truthful, to be the right path for each of us to become proactive in our families, through uh, our communities, and through our world connections and networks. The extraterrestrials that are coming here that I've had contact with, I still have contact with even today. And they have been coming to me since 1988, giving me guidance, giving me keys and clues as to how to move through this special time. I was originally told that 2012, um, well, that date particularly did not come up in my direct conversation with these beings. The date that did come up, however, was the year 2010, this year. 2010, they said, would be the year when earth changes would begin. And I had told people that since that time. And so when 2010 rolled around and these massive earth changes began, it was another sign to me that the information that they had been giving me was very powerful and very truthful and very clearly to point. So when the earth changes began with the uh, massive earthquake in Haiti, instead of having fear, 
I actually said to myself, if everything that they've said and shared with me is truth, then I know that humanity has the ability to change this negative course that we may be headed on. And that we are, in fact, doing it because I see it and I feel it and I sense it. And I'm having telepathic communication with these beings telling me that we are on the right path and that we are making a difference. The people within this community that are talking to each other through these different networks, we need to give support to one another through our emotional bodies, through our mental um, capabilities of sharing, and that through that we can begin to build communities that are making a difference to change this path to give more energy and more strength to our minds, our spiritual bodies, our physical bodies changing as well. And so 2012 was not a date that they mentioned. They said instead that every moment that we are here, that we exist, that we are alive in our human form, we can take this very uh, clear connection that each individual has within and that if we go within and we ask the question who am I and where am I from and you find that in yourself you become stronger spiritually religiously mentally and physically and that by doing this also, you begin to find answers because when you listen to people like myself um, or any of the speakers that are on a world stage or even your local stage, you listen with an understanding that everything is perspective, perspective in where you are on all of those ladders of knowledge. You take in what it is that you feel is right for yourself and then you execute that and use that in your life with your friends, with what you share with them, with your families. It's a ripple effect and this is where we are in this particular time moving towards 2012 and beyond this time. The energy that we carry within our bodies and within our, our minds is like a radio wave, if you can look at it and think of it this way. It's like a radio wave. Except the radio wave is our, our, our mouths, what we speak. But it's also what we let off energetically. And if you walk into a room of people who are very, very angry, for example, you walk in and at the moment that you enter the room, you absolutely feel it immediately and you sense it. And that's because our physical bodies generate energy. And it's like this radio wave. We're sending it out into the world. If we're focused on these negative messages that are coming out about 2012, if we're focusing on the negative um, messages that we're receiving about what's happening in our world, and we're only focused on that, then we take that into our bodies, through our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and we push that out in that energetic radio wave, or that wave of energy, and we are giving more to it as we're going along. We're moving and moving and moving, and we're moving on a negative, on a negative path. The way to do this to, is to, for each individual, to really think about uh, what it is that's important to them. If you're focused on uh, indigenous issues, then really focus on that and find your passion and your true heart and follow that. If your focus in a, is on farming and gardening, then focus on that, getting um, planting your garden, uh, educating the kids in your neighborhood about where their food comes from and going back to some basics 
turning off the, this computer once in a while and go into a, a setting with your family or your friends and having direct conversations. All of these little things, all of them, make a very big difference in our world. And the star beings, when they came to me in 1988, very clearly shared with me that the thinking and the thought process that we have is extremely important for our future. When I had this encounter in 88, I was shown on this screen many, many images, and one of them that was very beautiful was of a very specific and particular group of people that was here on the earth. I was told that one day I would find them and that when I, when I did, I would recognize them as being this very particular group that was very important to the earth. And in 2003, on a journey through the southwest and the Four Corners area, that would mean Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. I was fortunate enough to pass through the land of the Hopi people. When I did this, the very first thing that happened was I went into a jewelry store and spent some time in there. And then I went into a little uh, cafe and I came back out. Uh, as I was walking out, I was looking at all of the people that were sitting in the booths having their lunch. And I call it a psychic flash where there was an instant where it was like a, uh, a wall opened up and everything in the entire, um, my entire vision changed. And I saw maybe four or five of these Hopi men where their faces changed and they came right up um, with very long necks as if they moved and came right up to me and looked at me. They did not look human in that moment. Now, just as fast as this vision came, it left. And when that happened, I knew that, the, that this group of people were these special people that I was told by the extraterrestrials, the star beings, to find. When I got out into the car, I already knew that there was this uh, very deep connection between the Hopis and the Maya. And this, this is something that I hold very dear in my heart because this was information that was given directly to me from these star beings. It wasn't from visiting the indigenous cultures. It was not from reading books or talking to other people. I had no knowledge at that time of these particular groups of people. And yes, I always had an, a, a, a close um, feeling with the indigenous people of Earth, but uh, and great respect and honor for them. But it wasn't until the star beings in 1988 told me who the indigenous people were and what role they have to play on our Earth and what special role they have to play during this time not just to do with 2012, but with this particular um, grouping of years around 2012. They also told me that um, these, this particular group, which in this moment in 2003 I knew was the Hopi, I knew that all of these groups of indigenous people around the world were connected to one another because they had come from the prior world. They had come from the world, um, the third world, and this is the wording of the uh, star beings, the third world, and that they were then taken to what we are now in, which is the fourth world, and we are moving into what is called the fifth world. This 
does not always mean that there's going to be a, a cleaning of the earth, a cleansing of it. It doesn't mean that massive transformation. These changing times that we're going in are really up to each one of us. And that the indigenous people are playing a role in this changing time by having certain prophecies that they've been carrying and holding on to, waiting for the right moment to share with the public. The Mayans have been very, very vocal in the last few years about these prophecies. But I also know that like everything else, we are in human bodies. We are in human minds. And we must um, take into account that even within the, um, the Mayan community, there are different perspectives about exactly what we are moving through about when the date of 2012 and this great change is going to take place, that there are differences of opinions. We need to use caution as we, use, as we move through this time. And this is a difficult uh, position for people to understand. I'm suggesting from this direct knowledge from the star beings that we must be very cautious of who we follow through 2012, what line of information we bring forward in our own lives, what line of information we are going to um, accept fully. The star beings express to me the importance of going within and always checking deep within yourself is what this person's saying uh, resonate with me? Does it make sense? Is it clear? Do I accept it? So the indigenous cultures from around the world, the Mayans being very vocal and very strong in their spiritual beliefs, being very strong in, in a group of indigenous people that have been able to hold on to this sacred knowledge. My understanding from the star beings is that the Hopis and the Mayans were like direct brothers of each other, that there was a direct link, and that what had happened long ago was that the Hopis and the Mayans were all one tribe um, many, many, many years ago, many thousands of years ago. And that during this time, when they were still together, they had the whole of the prophecies as one. As time passed, this group, which was the Hopi and the Maya together, decided to part ways and that the Hopis began to travel away from the Maya, which is now known as the Maya. This is not the stories that I've heard from other people. This is what the star beings shared with me directly. It was said that the, um, the prophecies were so important to hold on to for 2012 and moving forward. Um, I'm saying 2012 because this is the time frame that the star beings talked about. But I don't want to give too much energy towards that date. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But during this very special time, the prophecies of this group of people was so important that they decided to break up the prophecies and give part of the prophecies to one group and leave part of the prophecies with the rest of the group. So what would happen is the Hopis traveled north and the Maya traveled in the South American region and they kept the two parts of the prophecy and that in time when all of the prophecies that they had been carrying had been fulfilled as we were getting closer to this very special time on the earth of the energetic change that we were moving into and again, this is from the star beings information. 
as we moved through this energetic change and our physical bodies began to change, our understandings and perceptions began to change, that we would begin to have greater understanding of our power within our mental bodies, our physical bodies, our emotional bodies. As we were going through the cycle of the universe, of where the physical um, earth was sitting within the universe itself began to change. Where the position of the sun would be sitting, so that would mean more solar flares would be coming closer to the earth. As all of these things happened, the indigenous cultures from around the world would recognize the signs and begin to speak and share their ancient knowledge, their um, prophecies, and they would even begin to share some of the information regarding their contacts with extraterrestrials, with the star beings, with the great ancestors of our time, of this world. All of these things, for me, um, have been a process of watching in wonderment. I have been witness myself to all of these um, pieces of information that were shared with me in 2000 and, or sorry, in 1988, working up to 2010. And as each one of them has become clearer and clearer and clearer, and every one of them has become a reality, including the information about 2010 being the time and the year when the earth changes would happen. I often become overwhelmed because I know that what they shared was the truth. And if all of these things about the indigenous cultures coming forward and speaking as well, and about our ability to come together energetically, spiritually, religiously, if we could just set aside our differences, we could change this entire world into a utopia, into a world without wars, into a world of great change from where we are today. I don't believe this is possible in the blink of an eye because it would take almost every person on earth to come into a, a spiritual agreement on this matter. What would happen is, and what is happening, is that the indigenous cultures are coming forward and speaking and the Maya being of great vocal influence on the world. One of the other strongest tribes on earth is the Hopi of Arizona, of which I have been with for the last three months. People are wondering why it is that the Hopi have not spoken about their prophecies, why it is that they're not coming forward to the world, why is it that their voice is so quiet? I can share some insight with you. I will share with you some insight about what the star beings have shared with me, and I think that will give more insight into who they are and what role they are currently playing in our world. According to the star beings, the indigenous people were taught from the beginning of the last world on the energies of life. Now, the word life being everything. The computer that you're sitting at right now, that you're able to put your hands on and touch, is still alive. It is still part of energy. The plant that you may be having sitting beside you, your garden outside, the earth, the sun, the stars, our physical bodies, all of the animals in the world, is all life. There is no distinction between a rock and the sun, between a bird and a flower, between a lamp 
and a human being. The distinction is that life is everything. It is everything that exists in the world and in the universe. If, if the energies and the life of our physical world that we've created around us, um, the houses that we live in, the electricity that we've created, the um, computers that we've built, the televisions, the, um, the blankets that we make, all of that is actually life. Because without one, there is no existence of the other. So the physical world is in the relation of our world outside of us. It's all interrelated. The Hopi and the indigenous cultures of the world understand this energy of life and the interconnectedness between our world, meaning the earth, and everything that lay upon it, as well as into the other worlds, meaning the other timelines, the other dimensions, even into the hollow earth where these star beings, some of them reside. The star beings are living in the existence of more than one reality. Some of them live within the hollow earth. Some of them live on other planets. Some of them live on crafts that are other places in the universe or fairly close to this earth itself. Some of them are even walking among us and you may or may not recognize them. So Everything is life, and everything is interconnected. I cannot and will not speak on behalf of Hopi, but I will tell you that the star beings explain to me that these cultures, if they remembered through all of this time that had passed, if they remembered their ceremonies, if they remembered who they were and where they came from, if they remembered the prophecies that were given to them, then they would indeed remember all of, the t all of the information that we needed in the world in order to pass through this time with greater ease. All of these ancient cultures also, not just indigenous, but all ancient cultures, do ceremony of one kind or another. And what they have in common is that they are doing ceremony for life itself, of life that is... Um, uh, they have stories of life itself, of um, how it's interconnected and where we're moving into. So to take this a step further, when, when they go into ceremony, they're using that energetic body to create that thought, that emotional response, and that radio wave, one might say, to move out from the body and send energy out into the earth. And so that's why these cultures, and even for yourself and for myself, it's important to do ceremony or to do prayer or meditation for a positive future. Because 2012, I will tell you this, according to the Hopi, is not a date in time that they put focus on. They do not say that 2012 is going to be the destruction and the end of our world. That is not what they focus on. They say that whatever it is that we are focused on is what we will create. So I can tell you from the Hopi themselves that they are concerned about the focus being put on the negative aspects of this particular 
changing time that we're in. It is called the end times because it's the end of one way of thinking and moving into another. It is the end of um, kind of a suppressed mind and moving into a more enlightened mind. So everything is perspective. Everything is life and everything has challenges for how we're going to move through this time. If we can come together in our understanding of who we are within our individual selves, we can come together in a community and that's where we need to focus. It's really important for each and every one of us to understand that we each are playing a critical role and no one person is more important than the other in what we're doing. Because the great gathering of humanity that needs to happen has already been taking place for many, many, many years. And I'm sure that everyone has been becoming more and more aware that there's more groups and organizations that are speaking out about this unique time that we're in. Whether it's the Hopis and the Mayans or the Aborigines, the, um, the religious um, leaders of the world, even governments have a role to play in moving forward. And no one no one group is bad or good. We are all in the process of change and of learning. These things that I'm sharing may appear to be really simple. They may not be based in dates, exact times. They may not be based in um, being able to give to you some great grand story that comes out of the ancient cultures of the Maya or the Hopis or anyone else. But they are very important facts because the words that I'm sharing are not from myself. They are the words of the star beings and they've given us clues. They've given us breadcrumbs. They've given us guidance in our dreams, our meditations, our face-to-face -face contacts of where we can go if we choose to. So what we need to do collectively is take a look at where we are right now. So if we do that and we look, about, look around at the um, ancient cultures, they're stepping forward and they're speaking sharing their words from their ancient wisdom. And this is a very positive thing. There are certain things that I don't agree with that were not told to me by the star beings. One of them is that we're going to be moving into three days of darkness. I think that this, in my, in my view, is where we are right now. I don't think that it's a physical, we are going to move into three days of darkness. I believe that it is within, um, that it, this is the time period that we're in right now is within this three days of darkness according to a Mayan calendar. Meaning uh, that the concept of, um, the concept of darkness is the darkness within the mind. It's not a physical turn out the lights and sit there and don't move. It means be still within yourself. They're saying, the minds are saying, be still and sit quietly and the time will pass. I believe, in my perspective, from the information I have, is that we're in a time of chaos when we are seeking and searching for more information, for a greater understanding of who we are, of where we're going, of what, of what we need to be doing. So we've gone through this one period in the last year and a half or two years almost of complete chaos. 
And I'm sure that everyone has noticed that the people around us may be a little more confused. Um, do we uh, do we focus on the confusion, or can we focus on what it is that we're learning, those little bits of pieces that we really resonate with and that we can um, put onto our own personal foundations and then begin building a house on top of it. This is the time that we're in. We're in the time of great change. We are in the time of acceptance for ourselves and for those around us. And we're moving into a time of uh, really beginning to act on who we are. For example, if you believe that we need to be more cautious with our resources, water being one of them, or whether it is um, water, uh, the minerals, the alloys that we have, if you believe that we, we need to be more careful with how much garbage we're producing, and you truly believe that, we're moving through this time of darkness where we're trying to figure out how to make ourselves become more in balance with our earth and with life around us. So it's moving into a time of action. And this is what the star beings have said, is that with the knowledge of the ancient cultures, with the knowledge of the indigenous from the past, with the knowledge of the technolo technological world, of all of these pieces coming together, and then becoming in balance with one another, that's how the three days of darkness the end times, the changing times, are all interrelated. So, there is a really important part to all of this that's connecting all the dots, and that is the ET, star being, ancestor connection. They're connected to the ancient cultures. They're most certainly showing themselves more and more and more to our earth all the time. They are talking to us about self-responsibility and they're talking to us about global responsibility because if the one thing that we all have in common, people who have had these direct contacts, it's that I think that every one of us that I have ever actually heard talk about these things that have had these interactions. We've all been focused on the protection of our great earth and about a great respect for life and for humanity. As we're moving into this changing time, moving to 2012, more and more and more sightings have been happening around the world. They also shared this with me that the only time that they would come to Earth and lift the people off the Earth is if massive destruction was going to happen. This is what they have shared with me. They have said that at some point there is the possibility that we could be living on this Earth side by side, but this would not be in, in an instant and it would take great, great time, lengths of time, in order for this to take place. So, because of their energetic field and how strong it is, we as human beings have a very difficult time being around them for any length of time, because it changes our electromagnetic function throughout our body, in our brain. I don't know if disclosure is going to happen from um, any one particular source. It's my belief from what the star beings have shared with me and from my personal observations, my personal intuition, 
and those contacts and conversations I've had with people around the world that disclosure is already in the process of happening. It will not, I believe, happen in the blink of an eye. I believe that we are in the process of this. There's been more and more UFO sightings around the world. More and more people um, have been coming forward talking about their personal experiences and sightings. And I just am very grateful for that myself. The indigenous cultures, certain groups have even been talking about these ancient uh, sightings um, and interactions that they've had with the star beings. And I want to really make a point of, of giving some clarity with this. People have suggested that governments around the world are working to with different groups and with different organizations, uh, with different um, groups of ETs, let's say. And that there's been also talk that, that a lot of these, quote, UFOs are from different, um, maybe uh, different organizations around the world, we'll say. How could this be possible? I ask this logically for anyone who questions this to ask themselves this logically. If there are cave dwellings where ancient writing from thousands of years ago and ancient hieroglyphics in stone and in rock paintings around the world and in these ancient cultures that are talking about this have drawn pictures of UFOs and different, quote, extraterrestrials. How could it be that our, uh, that today, with our technological boom, that that's the result of these UFOs and sightings? It's illogical to think this. Now, there are always the possibility that certain, um, technologies have been used at this point by our modern day people. But to write the whole UFO phenomenon off based on this one tiny piece of information is ridiculous. I really implore people who feel this way to think logically and calmly and realistically about what it is that's happening to our earth. Many of us who have access to the extraterrestrial information one-on-one -on -one, and who um, have access to the indigenous cultures and the ancient teachings that they have carried on verbally for thousands of years, some of them, I ask you, why is it that if they're all the ones that are focused on respecting each other as human beings and respecting the earth, what it is that's actually happening here on our planet? Maybe we are walking into a time when we will live side by side with these beings, but the energy of the life forms that I came in contact with, the, with the tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed beings, is so strong that um, they actually change our genetic makeup, our physical makeup, when we come into contact with them for any length of time. So where are we? We're in the time of change. Do the Hopis have all of the answers? I don't believe that they do. Do the Mayans have all of the answers? I don't believe they do. Do people like myself have all of the answers? No. But I can tell you that each one of us has a small piece to this massive puzzle that we are creating on our Earth and that 
what is the most important message that has come through is to follow your own intuition and to allow that to be your guide for how this next few years is going to take um, the, the next few years of our lives are going to be brought about as a result of what choices we make today. So the great gathering of humanity is something that the extraterrestrials have talked about. They talked about how we would come into this chaotic time, that our energetic bodies were going to begin to change as a result of the position that we're in in the universe, because of the solar flares, um, because of our inner working spiritually, and how all of that energy was going to move out through those different waves of energy. And as we shared that, we were going to change our physical world around us. So, <clears throat> all of these pieces of energy that we are carrying with us will transform the world. And so, we need to take responsibility, accepting that every single individual has that ability to work in those energies. And I want to actually share how we can do that exactly. One of the things that I was told was when we go into meditation, one of the things that happens is a change within your brain. Now, when we think about who we are as human beings on an energetic level, we think about, um, you can think about many different focus points. Uh, you can think about your soul, you can think about your spirit, and you can think about your physical body your brain, your thought pattern. You need to, first of all, choose whatever it is that feels right for you. People often ask me how I meditate. I meditate laying down, sitting up, walking down the street. I meditate before I go to sleep. I meditate laying um, flat on my back. I meditate with my legs crossed. Any position that you are comfortable in is the first thing for you to find and to discover within yourself. Once you've done that, there's all sorts of techniques that you can use that can ground you into the earth and put up your light body of protection. And I would suggest that everyone go in and, and search not only within themselves, but through um, the internet, through yoga groups and meditation groups, and through that network of friends and family that you have around the world. And ask questions about how they go into a meditation. When you find whatever is comfortable for you, I'm going to explain to you, as it was explained to me by the star beings, what it is that actually takes place. When we are in the physical body, the physical body is regulated as a result of the brain. The brain is part of the connection between all of the different uh, energies that we have the ability to go into. The brain works on small electrical charges, and these small electrical charges are pathways of the mind. You can write and rewrite your brain pattern. You can expand or compress your brain patterns. Some of this information is being proven now by the scientific community. When people go into meditation, 
their electrical pathways expand and they have massive firing of the brain pattern. So when you go into a meditation, one of the ways that you can make this energetic connection between your body and your um, soul level, spirit level, energetic level stronger is to imagine your brain and imagine little lights that are like uh, Christmas lights because we're almost on at Christmas. Like little Christmas lights flashing and connecting with one another and they're beeping and then connecting, beeping and then connecting. When you think of this, you can, you're automatically going to see your brain. For most people, they're automatically going to see, see this. And you may see a lot of darkness or dark parts of your brain, or you may see um, areas that you want to push that, um, that little light button further. And just imagine that. Imagine that from the center of your mind, all these light rays are coming out from all directions. And that from there, you're just allowing yourself to be connected with that light. What will happen is the brain fires, and then it goes into the electrical body of yourself as the individual when that happens, the transmitters all over in your body begin to fire. And they actually start to vibrate at a higher or faster, one might say, frequency. So as that happens, you, your inner light body can in fact move through the physical body and leave through the top of your head if you become very effective and efficient at this or you can just allow part of your spirit to go out and experience different visions that may come to you or different, um, uh, different astral experiences that you may have. There's no reason to fear any of this. Your body will feel differently, you will feel lighter, you may even feel a little bit lightheaded, and it's all right because you're in complete control of how much or how little this happens. The only thing to remember in this process is that you need to turn off the mind when you come back and let it power back down again. Because otherwise, what will happen is if you're too open to these different dimensions that you may be able to make contact with, with these different um, uh, you may even make contact with the star beings in this type of a heightened brain activity because it lets go of this energy through your body and then you're actually filtering energies from elsewhere in the universe from the other dimensions through yourself physically through your body and then the information will begin to flow and when you are there, you will instantly recognize it. And when you do, ask a question. Ask any question you like. Because you may be very surprised at what the answer is. If I ask who I am to, during this time, it's a massive set of circumstance, a massive set of information that can come back because it's not a simple answer. None of the questions that you ask will be simple because everything is interconnected. So when you receive the information, you will always have 10 more, 20 more, endless numbers of questions to replace the one that you thought you might just get the answer for. But it's part of the process, you see, of being able to allow this physical energy around us to change. Because if I'm happy and I'm in my heart, then I can allow that energy to flow through 
And then as I push it out into the world, someone else that's maybe having a very bad day will feel that energy and their physical bodies and their minds will be affected by it. And they will automatically become feeling better and lighter and happier. We do this all the time on a subconscious level. What we need to do is become more proactive in using that strength of energy. How this relates to this changing time of t around 2012 and how this relates to the indigenous and to the star beings is that we're all interconnected then the energies that we can become stronger and stronger at using can allow us to have a more direct contact with the other beings in maybe the hollow earth through telepathy or through the other dimensions, through our meditations. We may be able to make contact with them through all of these means. On top of that, through our meditations, our prayers, our ceremonies from the indigenous around the world, if we can focus ourselves with our hearts, with our positive thinking, and with our positive thoughts of the future, it moves the energy out and begins to affect every single bit of life around us. And we have the ability to change or to choose, I think would be better to say at this point, to choose the future that we want for ourselves. Because physically, we can actually make a difference, physically if enough human beings focus on the same thought. If we can continue to keep the prayers and meditations from the groups around the world going, then what we can do is we can continue to enlighten people, to actually begin to awake up and see where we are and how we need to move responsibly through this changing time. It is a difficult time we're in. And so the thoughts that we carry during these times of meditation and prayer, if we want to focus on ourselves and ask for personal guidance, it's great to do that. If you want to send prayers and thoughts to your friends and your family in a positive way, it's great to do that. But always remember that when you're in these heightened states of awareness and when you're in a heightened state of thought to think about the whole world and about the universe and to send that energy out to every man, woman, child, plant, animal and grain of soil on this great earth. Send it to the air, the sun, the stars, the star beams, and have gratitude in your heart for all of these worlds and realities for being connected. This is the message of the star beings, because the changes that we are physically going through on the planet with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and solar flares are going to continue, but it does not mean that we need to fear or hold those thoughts, because if you are connected within yourself, spiritually, you will always be guided to the safe place to be during a time of hardship. You will be guided for what truth to follow if you are listening with ears and an open heart, if you're being guided to um, connect with certain people from around the world to start focus groups on anything that is focused on humanity or the earth, then this is something to follow if 
you are following with an open heart. There's certain areas of this uh, phenomenon with the extraterrestrial contacts, the indigenous cultures, and with the mm, spiritual movement that is happening on the earth that all have threads that are interconnected with each one. And if you listen very carefully, we are all saying the same message. And this is the great thing, is that I don't need to agree with everything that um, someone else is saying that, that may have had extraterrestrial contact. I don't, I don't need to agree with um, the approach that everyone's taking. And neither do you. And we need to remind ourselves of this. When, you're, when you are caring enough and taking the time and making the effort to read the books, to listen to programs like um, this one, 2012 and Beyond, and to go to the seminars and, and the gatherings and the conferences, remember that it's not necessary to accept across the board everything that one person is saying. That you can take what parts resonate with you and leave the rest. Again, this is an actual message that the star being said to me. They actually remind me of this, that we don't need to follow any one person or thought or belief system, that we need to always pay attention to our hearts and to follow from within, that that is the only way to the truth and it is the only path to true enlightenment. And this is an area that even for someone like myself, when just yesterday I was driving in my car and I had telepathic communication with the star beings, I always, even then, when I have visions from them or dreams, um, I always question what they share with me. Because even I will not follow anyone blindly. So this is part of the teachings that have come forward. And if you listen to the other people in all of the different spiritual groups that are speaking right now, they too are saying this. So it's a reminder for all of us that through this time of chaos that we're in, this time of change, um, this time of reawakening of our inner spiritual selves. Pay attention to the inner self because it's the most important one to pay attention to. And it brings it into where we're going into the future. So when I take a look at um, the indigenous cultures, I'm going to focus on them for a moment because they're talking about where we're going. When all of us that are already creating this massive network around the planet and all of us around the earth have different groups that we're associating with and we're making these connections Remember that the conversation, the direct conversation that you're having with someone is actually laying a foundation for our future. So the star beings that I had contact with in physical contact with in 1988, and I still have communication with them today, and I still have the, um, the, the craft and, and the orbs, the star orbs, that come to me today, even today, in 2010. They come to me every once in a while. 
they still continue to keep telling me that we have a responsibility to each other and that we have a responsibility to act on some of these more positive and enlightening um, messages that we're receiving and that we do need to become active in creating a positive focused change so how do you do that? I receive emails and messages from people all over the world telling me how frustrated they are right now, how um, they don't know what it is that they should be doing or can be doing. And I think that I just would like to remind everyone to be gentle with themselves. Because even I have to remind myself to be gentle with myself. And I try to do that every day. Because every day is a new day. And every day has new choices of what it is that we can do, be doing for ourselves spiritually and for our world around us. We've gone through this difficult time in the last couple of years. Probably I would say the last four years have been exceptionally difficult for the firing, the electrical firing of our bodies, which is why people have been all of a sudden waking up and uh, becoming very enlightened very quickly, rapidly, um, researching um, different phenomenon on the internet, uh, very, very, very focused, and what has been happening is that that time was chaos for a lot of people emotionally. Then we went into a period, a short period of time last year when there was a lot of doorways that were being opened energetically to the other dimensions. And so a lot of information um, it was coming through and not all of it positive. And so we've kind of gotten ourselves through this really dark period. And it was, in my view, a dark period. We are now on the threshold of changing into another, um, another phase. Now, according to the Mayan calendar, um, a lot of the people who follow the Mayan calendar talk about these different days and times that we're in. I can't explain any of that to you. I work very much on an intuitive level. And when the information comes from the star beings as well. So just in the last week, we are moving into a new shifting phase for this positive energy to start coming about. So I believe that what you're going to start to see in, in at least the next year is there's going to be a great deal more uh, focus on truth. Truth is going to become stronger. It's going to become bigger. It's going to become louder. So many people around the world from every walk of life are going to start sharing their truth. That's one thing that will be happening. You will also find that it will be easier for you to accept uh, what the truth is. So what this means is for some people, if they've never believed in extraterrestrial contacts, they may actually have an epiphany that will assist them to be able to say, you know what, maybe it is real. Or maybe people that um, do not believe that it's possible for them to have out-of-body experiences will all of a sudden be able to accept that, yes, I can have those experiences. Because each and every one of us is capable of greatness. So as we're moving through over the course of the next probably eight months or so, there's going to be a lot of activity where people that have spoken have, um, that have never spoken or been very quiet will begin to um, become more vocal in their communities and in their families. 
And it's just, I want to remind everyone that during this process of sharing, because this is the time we're moving into, the time of heart sharing, to be gentle with the people that are around you and remind, I'm reminding you that you do not need to convince anyone of anything, that it's possible for them to awaken on their own time. Just be the example for the world. Be the example for your family, for your children, and for your school educations. Um, this is where we need to focus and think it's possible for us to work together and move into this time. Now this is on the short term. When you go into a longer term, probably over the next 10 years, 5 to 10 years after that, there's going to be drastic changes that are going to take place. I don't believe that it would be responsible of me to share even my insights into it because it has always been made clear to me from the star beings that we every day are changing our path to the future. Always. We are always changing our path to the future. So if I have a quote prediction or, a, or an insight into something, it does not necessarily mean it's going to happen. The difference between a prediction and a prophecy. Prophecy is something that is a marker for us. It tells us that we can choose this path or that we have the choice to leave it behind. A lot of people say that 2012 will be the year of great destruction and that this is coming from prophecy. It's a reminder to say if we continue on the same path and all of the prior prophecies have taken place, if we stay on the same path that we will in fact create that prophecy of destruction. It also means a prophecy that we have the ability to use our minds and our bodies and our choices to change the path and not have that prophecy take place. When you predict something it says that this is going to happen and that you cannot stop it. Predictions are very difficult. I know that from personal experience, from having premonitions about things all my life, that if you are very clear in your premonition, if, the, if it is extremely clear that you can in fact change the outcome, we can through small choices of change not have these things happen. So there, there's a lot of individual responsibility that we have that each individual has to take um, and accept that they are accepting that responsibility mentally, emotionally, and that physically they are acting on what it is that they feel needs to happen in the world in a positive, peaceful, heart-centered way. There is change from We've talked about the physical body and how that can change out into the world. And again, I like to remind everyone, these are simple, simple stories I'm telling you. But this truly is the information that the star beings shared with me. And so, we need to come back into contact and closer contact with the Earth. 
So starting a project with your friends or your community that are that's creating gardens or community gardens or planting a garden in your home can help to alleviate the resources of the cans and the plastics and the garbage, the packaging, um, the transportation, the gas, the, the, the oil production, um, the mining, all of these things can be helped by planting a garden. So I encourage everyone to get heritage and heirloom seeds that are not genetically modified and plant a garden. Share what it is that comes and grows out of the earth. Share it with your community and with your neighbors. And, and when you're in this process, you become more connected with the earth and with life itself. You become more respectful of our water resources and what it is that is actually giving us life. We need to change the path that we're on. And all of these things are connecting back to the indigenous cultures and what they are telling us today. That we need to become more connected with the earth, respectful of one another. They're saying it in a different way than I am. I am not an indigenous person. Indigenous people have beautiful stories that they can share that have been carried on for hundreds or thousands of years, verbally, person to person, and held until this very special time. Every one of us can, and I think already does know, at least on some level, what our part is in this changing time. Some people have said that um, they have been encouraged by people like myself and many others coming forward and sharing our very personal stories that have not always been easy to, to share and to talk about. And that they've been encouraged to um, write a book or to start a blog or to um, start a newspaper or something along those lines. Others have taken on very much active um, approaches physically hands-on by starting an organization to go and protect the waters in Africa or in South America. Others have taken on projects to educate people from around the world. And you can do all of these things on a grassroots level. Always remembering, going back to what the star beings have shared, is that, and, and to not only, not only the star beings, but all religions talk about this as well. It's about the unity of humanity and how all of this prayer, meditation, and focus can in turn make a difference in our world and affect the energies that are around us.